God's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come back, all you nations, sing of your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Ring out the Lord's glory, seize him with your music, worship Continue with our prayer in the words of our baptisms. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Today we will hear from the Gospel of Mark. Mark's Gospel is the oldest and the shortest, and his writing is the most succinct of all the Gospels. May our faith too be strengthened by Mark's writing as we move through the coming weeks in prayer and sacrament. Lord Jesus, you calm the storms. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you make all things new. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give strength to the weak. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise our God in song. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of
O God, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within the doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands? When I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door and said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther. And here shall your proud waves be stilled. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 1126. Give thanks to the Lord.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us. Once we have come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, New things have come. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat just as he had, was. And other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and rave, waves were breaking over the boat so that was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord. Well, first of all, I want to welcome all the dads here on Father's Day weekend. Congratulations. And, uh, you know, we know that not every dad is a great dad. I know that for myself. I keep trying to improve myself, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. But, you know, we do try. And yet we know that in this church, there are dads who have committed themselves to improving themselves, to becoming greater dads than what they are now. And we want to give them this recognition that they so well deserve. So let me share a dad's story with you. And it's not from my family. A certain mother tells about her two daughters who were having a discussion about family resemblance. I look like mom, said a nine-year-old, but I have dad's eyes and dad's lips. The six-year-old said, and I look just like dad. He has dark hair, but I have light hair. Then the six-year-old turned to her mom and asked that dreaded question every parent knows is gonna come sooner or later. What does dad have to do with us being born anyway? As the mother was about to answer in this long, drowned-out statement, her older sister jumped right in and said, Don't be stupid, Lisa. Dad is the one who drove Mom to the hospital. <laughs> well, dads serve one vital function anyway, don't they? You know, 
Again, happy Father's Day to all the dads that are here this afternoon. Have you ever prayed for something and received precisely what you prayed for? You know it's a pretty good feeling that you get when that happens. Maybe you prayed that you or someone you love would be healed of a serious illness. Or maybe you prayed that you would finally meet that special someone in your life. Or maybe you prayed and prayed that you would reconcile with an estranged family member. Whatever it may be, getting what we pray for is about as good as it gets for us. And when that happens, most of us are more than willing to give God the credit, especially if what we prayed for was unlikely or seemed impossible for us to do. And we feel that God has come through for us when we needed him most. He wasn't that unforeseen person up in the sky. But what if that didn't happen to you? What if your prayers weren't answered? What if Jesus didn't calm the storm confronting us? In today's gospel, the disciples were faced with a situation that threatened to overwhelm them. Being drowned in a sudden storm and not having the faith that Jesus was there for them. And sometimes in our lives, we face situations that threaten to overwhelm us. Despite the fact that we are people of faith, these storms come into our lives so suddenly and with such fury that we are not prepared to handle them. Storms of sickness, disease, and even death. Relationship issues, parenting issues, and employment woes. These storms come no matter how faithful we are in our service to God. They come no matter how perfect our attendance in church may be. And you know what? Like me, I ask, why? Why don't they come? Well, I don't know about you, but whenever I'm in a storm that is threatening to overwhelm me, I rarely feel the joy that comes from trusting, hoping, and believing in a loving God. And I end up screaming, God, don't you care for me? God, you're letting me drown. That sounds like so many of us, doesn't it? When we are in our own storm, we too wonder if God still cares about us. When tossed about by the storm, we often call out to God, not because we know that he's there and able to deliver for us, but because we feel abandoned by him. Our call is, where are you, God? Why have you abandoned me? Sounds like a little like a man that hung on a cross on Calvary, doesn't it? One of the hardest things we will do in life is continuing to trust and hope and believe in a loving God in the midst of our tremendous sorrow, suffering, and pain or disappointment that we experience. In other words, when we don't get anything close to what we want, we find it hard to believe that there is a God out there for us. It is relatively easy to give credit to God when the storm has finally passed, after the struggle is finally over. Faith, on the other hand, invites us and challenges us to trust and hope and believe in a loving God when we are in the middle of that storm we are encountering. Even when the times are tough, even when the cross we are being asked to carry seems far too heavy for us to bear. Faith, it seems it isn't giving God the credit when things go our way. It's more about trusting even when they don't. I don't have to tell you that this journey each of us on will always have storms in our lives. God never said it was going to be easy for us. We need to know that God is not absent from us during these storms. Rather, he is right in the middle of them with us, accompanying us, sustaining us, guiding us, and at times even wiping away our tears. In a very real sense, you know, Jesus is not in that boat. Jesus is the boat. The place of safety and refuge that we can call on and that we can place ourselves into, which will carry us over the waters that threaten to drown us. The storms we experience in our everyday lives mirror the turbulent sea of Galilee. May each of us pray for the grace not to let the tough times get the best of us. Rather, when we find ourselves facing a storm, whether physical, spiritual, or emotional, may we continue to trust and hope and believe that God is there for us. And in ways that we cannot fully understand right now, 
everything will ultimately ultimately be okay because love because God loves us that much. Terrified? Not when we put our faith in the one who can keep us safe. Jesus can still 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 the storms of our life. This is the message of today's gospel. Jesus cares and he can quiet the storms that we encounter. our belief in God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We are called to give praise to the Lord, whose love is everlasting. Let us join together in offering our prayers to our loving Father in heaven. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the work of the church touch all humanity with healing and nourishment, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That nations compete with one another to bring peace instead of war, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those celebrating the sacrament of marriage this month, and for those whose marriages need strengthening, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of the senseless shooting in the church in South Carolina, and for their families, may God be with them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our fathers, grandfathers, uncles, and all those who have loved us and been like fathers to us, those living and those who have passed on to eternal life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father L and Father Bob, in gratitude for their service ministering to our parish community, may God be with them as they begin their new assignments, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Elizabeth Arnold, William Lamb, and Harold Sabo, who died this past week, and for those remembered at this Mass, living and deceased members of the Charlie and Mary Van Fleet family, Roy and Elsie Streeby, and Joseph Luttenberger, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of our own personal petitions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, the world came about at your command. Deepen in us an unshakable faith in your goodness and love. And grant these our prayers that we may make in Jesus' name, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please join in our preparation song, number 717, Shelter Me, O God.
Please rise. Let us pray that our sacrifice here may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O God, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise. Grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts and give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image, setting us over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Yes, Lord, you are holy. You are kind to us and to all. For this we thank you. We thank you above all for your Son, Jesus Christ. You sent him into this world because people had turned away from you and stopped loving each other. But he helped us all to see that we are sisters and brothers, that you are Father of us all. He now gathers us together at one table and asks us to do what he did. And so, Father, we ask you to bless these gifts of bread and wine and make them holy. Change them for us into the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. On the night before he died for us, he had supper for the last time with his disciples. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it 
gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. God, our Father, we remember with joy all that Jesus did to save us in this holy sacrifice which he gave as a gift to the church we remember his death and resurrection father in heaven accept us together with your beloved son he willingly died for us but you raised him to life again jesus lives with you in glory but he is also here on earth among us one day he will come in glory then in his kingdom there will be no more tears no more suffering no more pain or sadness. Father in heaven, you have called us here at this table to receive the body and blood of Christ and to be filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Give us strength to please you more and more. Lord our God, remember Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop. Help all who follow Jesus to work for peace and to bring happiness to others. And then bring us all at last, together with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, and all the saints, to be one with Christ in heaven. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now. Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but rather on the faith and love of your people. Grant to us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Yes, Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May your body and blood bring us your life today and forever. I just have two announcements. Uh, we're going to be having baptisms after Mass. And may I have the families that brought the special guests with us? Please, please stand so we can recognize you. I know you're here. <laughs> Don't be bashful. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you. And after Mass, give me about 10 or 15 minutes, and this way you can get the little one together and everything, and we'll meet back by the baptismal font, okay? Thank you. And once again, congratulations. I just want to... And one last thing, I, I, I asked Father L, and uh, he confirmed it. I just want to let you all know, this is Father L's last Mass here with us. So. So now I'm going to be your guest, and I hope that will be often. I uh, have grown a lot, uh, been spiritually fed by being here with you, and I thank you for all that. So God bless you as well. Thank you. And Deacon Dale, thank you so much for uh, breaking open the word for us today and for your ministry uh, here at Holy Family and for the baptisms. It was really wonderful praying with you again today. Fantastic. And uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who helped us with our prayer today, with the music and the ministries to the ambo and the altar. We appreciate all of those very, very much. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O God, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in our closing song, number 604, All the Ends of the Earth. Every heart, every nation, call him Lord.